Hello friends, Namaste. In this video, we will talk about inside therapy. Now, inside therapy is also a part of the psychodynamic approaches to therapy. And uh, we have discussed classical psychoanalysis. In this particular session, we will be covering inside therapy, what insight is, what insight therapy is all about the goals and techniques that are used in insight therapy. Now, if you look at the American Psychological Association's Dictionary of Psychology's definition, they define insight therapy as any form of psychotherapy based on the theory that a client's problem cannot be resolved without his or her gaining self-understanding and thus becoming aware of their origins. So it means Inside therapy believes that unless we learn the genesis of a problem from where it is coming, what is the root cause of my problem, we won't be able to deal with them. The therapist's task is to help the client understand how their beliefs, thoughts, feelings, experiences and life events from their past impact their present issues and concerns. We all have beliefs about success, failure, career, marriages, pain, relationship, conflict, big emotions. Now these beliefs that are formed in the initial childhood years will impact our behavior, will impact our personality, will impact our experiences in the present time. The past that we bury deep inside has a rippling effect on our present. The emphasis is on clients in-depth exploration of the unconscious and their past and it involves interaction between the client and therapist. Jopling has summarized the standard view of insight therapy as a insight oriented psychotherapy is a valid method of personal discovery that allows clients to discover truths about themselves and to acquire bona fide self-knowledge. The methods of insight-oriented psychotherapies have specific and non-suggestive effects. And one of the primary agents of therapeutic change in insight-oriented psychotherapies is the therapist's use of interpretations. The client's acquisition of truth-tracking insight is a necessary condition for therapeutic improvement. So it means that therapeutic change or improvement is not going to happen unless and until the client has arrived at insight and understanding into their unconscious functioning. So now what are the goals of insight therapy? As the name suggests, the goal of insight therapy is basically facilitating insight in the client. The idea that increasing the client's awareness into his or her own unconscious psychological processes leads to change may be regarded as the core of psychoanalytic tradition. So it must be noted that insight cannot be given from outside. It cannot be planted by the counsellor. It is something which takes time and the client arrives at his own pace through interaction with the counsellor and various self-exploration processes that are happening during the process of therapy. So, the goal of insight therapy is to make the client's unconscious fears, unconscious desires and motivations conscious. This would give the client the required freedom to overcome hurdles, symptoms or behaviours that are currently impacting clients functioning. So insight therapy is basically aims at helping the clients resolve their conflicts and issues related to the following. So there are major themes that are uh, that come very frequently in insight therapies. The first one is the childhood. So going back to the client's childhood is central to psychoanalytic insight therapy. A person's childhood can have a significant impact on their adult life. What we go through as a child shapes our future experiences in life, shapes our personality, our beliefs, our attitude, our thoughts. 
For instance, a child who lacks a warm and close relationship with their parents might grow up to be very withdrawn person who dislikes connecting with others. Abuse is another thing that comes wherein experiencing some kind of physical or sexual abuse in the past might also come up during insight therapy. Struggles with interpersonal relationship, troubled relationship in the past, an individual struggle with different relationships, for example, with colleagues or friends or others in general, might actually be indicative of an unhealthy relationship with the significant in the past. For example, the relationship with the parents, the relationship with the siblings. Studies have shown that as the client gains insights into their problems, which is basically understanding the unconscious causes of problems, their symptoms get reduced. It is realizing the connections between the past experiences, feelings, motivations and conflicts which have been repressed with present behavior, problems and perceptions. Insight can be a sudden flash of realization or it can be a gradual self-understanding. So insight is basically getting in touch with the unconscious and bringing the unconscious into the conscious. It is regarded as particular kind of self-realization or self-knowledge, especially regarding the connections of the experiences and conflicts in the past with present perceptions and behavior. So that's very important connection between the past and the present and realizing that connection is something that contributes to insight. The basic question that is answered is what is causing the conflict? Where is the genesis of this conflict or problem in my past? And the recognition of feelings or motivations that have been repressed. So for example, a client who feels depressed and angry and subsequently takes to drinking comes to realize that his feelings toward his boss are actually stimulated by an emotionally abusive father in his childhood. This type of realization gives the client new option. These options could include learning to separate his reactions to his supervisor from his feelings about his father, working through his feelings about his father of which he may not have been previously aware of, actively choosing alternative behaviors to drinking when he feels bad, for example, attending a self-help group and accepting greater responsibility for his feelings and behaviors. A broader definition of insight, also promoted by brief psychodynamic therapies, is simply any realization about oneself, one's inner workings and one's behavior. So the moment I'm able to identify my defenses, I can say that it is an example of insight. For example, a client who says that the only emotion I really feel is anger has opened the door to understanding the effect others have on this client and vice versa. When you explore that anger, the client can actually begin to develop alternative behaviors to those previously followed automatically uh, from her anger. So if the previous response was aggression after anger, now that you are exploring anger with the client, you will be able to understand that her emotional repertoire is why it is limited to only aggression and therefore the client would also can learn later on other ways of responding. Insight involves both thoughts and feelings. So it is not just the cognitive or intellectual exercise that is going to lead to behavior change. Uh, for insight to be effective, it needs to be accompanied by emotional experiences because when we emotionally experience insight, it leads to greater acceptance of responsibility for our feelings and behavior. Thus, insight are often accompanied by catharsis, which is the release of emotion, often quite dramatic. Catharsis is the expression of pent up and repressed emotions. Freud regarded emotional insight as the most potent form of insight. Thus, insight can be both cognitive and insight can be Emotional. Insight can be revelations of the maladaptive defenses being used to ward off anxieties or conflicted emotional states. It can be recognition of the unmet needs during childhood. It can be an insight into one's relationship patterns and understanding the symptoms and overt behavior, which is a form of disguised reactions to the inner conflicts. In particular, 
there is an increased understanding of recurrent patterns of maladaptive relating to self and others in insight therapy it is important to note that counselor cannot give insight clients must arrive at it by themselves therefore there are two types of insight one is intellectual insight that is the cause effect relationship uh, why a particular behavior is occurring in my life why am i behaving in a certain manner and cognitive insight usually lacks depth because it does not connect the cognitive understanding with experiential feeling based understanding it is more like observing one's self from a distance on the other hand emotional insight connects affect to intellect the client is emotionally connected to his or her understanding it is not purely intellectual understanding of issues brings emotional experiences the simultaneous experience of self understanding with these feelings is insight in its most powerful and curative sense and that is emotional insight now what does insight does with the awareness that comes with insight the client experiences conscious control and increased conscious control when needs impulses and strivings are brought under conscious control the client is better able to make logical choices and is less driven by self destructive and non productive patterns of behavior so insight helps us to tame down our automatic ways of reacting and behaving it is also through objectification of self the client is better able to understand himself by standing back and objectively observing himself or herself which gives a clearer and a more accurate perspective insight also releases life energy the energy that was used that were consumed in the maintenance of the conflict in the maintenance of the defenses now that energy becomes free to be constructively used because i become aware of my defense so i don't no longer need to invest energy in maintaining their defenses it is free to be used for constructive purposes joplin provides uh, a number of criteria for evaluating if insights are true or not because it could be like you might just say that yes i understand but you might not actually understand so when is it that the insight is true if the insight is matching with the facts of the client psychology and life processes right if they are followed by over changes in the client's behavior so i gain insight i become more aware and my behavior also changes if the changes are internal the process of exploration moves forward and they are consistent with the insights in other case histories that the counselor is handling or when you are making previously unintelligible experiences intelligible when all these things are happening then we can say that insight has actually occurred when things were not making sense earlier but now they are making sense is an example of insight working now let us see three counseling vignettes of different individuals with similar problem and the problem that they have is unpunctuality these vignettes uh, they were basically designed to illustrate the therapeutic process and a similar problem was chosen for each vignette intentionally to highlight the unique meaning and motivation that a single issue or symptom may hold for each person so why is a person getting late let us see the vignette one a man comes to therapy stating among other issues that he has been late to several recent job interviews though not to other meetings or appointments so this person is getting late for interviews but not for other important meetings he is in the process of attempting to advance his career and being late to interviews is sabotaging his success now this is the case now when the therapist and the client they sit and they discover that trying to advance his career evoked in client deep feelings of insecurity and fears of failure while being late for interviews did effectively sabotage his success it was easier for him to write this off in his mind as a relatively minor problem around time management safeguarding the idea in his mind that he is actually otherwise capable of and deserving of promotion but he did not get the uh, promotion because he did not reach the interview in time so there is problem with time management and nothing else so it allowed him to uh, avoid giving himself full effort to obtain promotion and to avoid suffering associated with the risk of being rejected and failure 
which he imagined would be much more devastating than the relatively minor embarrassment of rejection based on his lateness, which is around the issue of time management. Now, when this was explored further, the client was better able to recognize and work through his insecurities and confidence issues, which in part had roots in his relationship with his father. And then because he could understand and gain insight, it freed him to advance his career. Let us consider another case, which is again related to unpunctuality. A woman comes to therapy stating that she is chronically late and has done everything that she can uh, to change this through a variety of organizational tools and methods, but of no help. Her tardiness is interfering with her work and relationships. So now again, the therapist and the client in the process of psychotherapy, they would discover that being early or even on time put the client on the risk of waiting for the other person who she was mating. And waiting evoked uncomfortable, needful feelings, especially when she was waiting for someone on whom she was reliant. This in part evoked her traumatic childhood experiences around being forgotten by her parents and having to wait for them. In these situations, whenever she had to wait for somebody, she had felt helpless, frightened and dependent. And this helplessness, fear was coming from her childhood trauma of being abandoned or forgotten by her parents. With the help of a therapist, this client gradually grew to tolerate her dependent, dependence feelings. And with that, she no longer needed to eliminate these feelings either by being late or through other problematic behaviors. Let us quickly consider the, another case again on being late. So a man comes to couples therapy with his wife and among other issues reports that over the past few years, he has developed a habit of being late, specifically when meeting or going places with his wife. So here it is being late with respect to when he has to go to a place with his wife. The therapist and clients discover in couples therapy that the couple developed relationship difficulties during the same period of time that he began to be late with his uh, meetings with his wife. One way that the relationship problem manifested was in their sex life. His wife had lost interest in sex, leading him to feel rejected and angry about waiting helplessly for his wife's interest to come back. He returned his experience with his wife around quite unconsciously by developing a habit of lateness with her. So now here, when you are getting late, she is the one who has to wait. So this effectively put his wife in his shoes, making her feel devalued while longing for and waiting helplessly at the hands of another. As these dynamics were brought more into the awareness in the couple's therapy, the underlying feelings gradually could be thought about and expressed productively in words instead of problematic actions. Now these three situations, cases, convey how the common problem of lateness can hold unique and unconscious motivation and meaning for different individuals. So these examples, I hope, you have been able to grasp what insight therapy is based on and get a sense of how it works. Now let us quickly see what are the techniques of insight therapy. Insight therapy, because it's a part of psychodynamic approaches to therapy, relies on the same technique that classical psychoanalysis use. So they use free association, they use dream interpretation, resistance and transference. As we have seen earlier, Interpretation forms the backbone of insight therapy too. So interpretation basically which is the therapist's skillful use of explanations to help the client reach insight. The therapist links client past and present experiences in the here and now and helps the client develop a new explanation for their problems, for their symptoms. This makes the symptoms appear more manageable to the client. The clients look at their symptoms with an increased understanding and also evaluates their usefulness. The accompanying emotional catharsis frees the client to act in new and more constructive ways. As we have seen, interpretation is the means by which material that is there in the unconscious is actually brought forth into the consciousness. It forms the basis of all techniques. Analyst points out, uh, even explain or teach the client the meanings of the behavior that is manifested in dreams, free association, resistance, 
transference etc part of the interpretation consists of filling in memory gaps also the function of interpretation is to allow the ego to assimilate new material uh, for example explanation of irrational behaviors on the basis of past and to speed up the process of uncovering more unconscious material ego is strengthened to overcome the resistances insight is empowering for a client as it brings greater clarity in the life and self understanding also the clients are empowered to make changes since they better comprehend how their past experiences are harming their present it gives internal freedom to the individual for example when a client is experiencing low self esteem the therapist might an analyze the client's childhood years to find non supportive parents and bullying in school which might have evoked negative emotions about self that were repressed and now in today's in the present moment it is manifesting as lack of self esteem then another technique is that of transference interpretation insight in the psychoanalytic sense often involves understanding of the recurrent maladaptive relationship patterns therefore use of transference interpretation becomes a very important technique transference is basically the client's emotional response to the counselor as he or she did to some significant other right so the clients may transfer to counselor feelings which are either positive or negative for example i might be seeing my mother in my therapist and therefore transfer on her positive feelings of love and respect or i might see the therapist as my abusive brother and transfer on him repulsion or anger thus these feelings are not based on the actual relationship between the client and the counselor they are not stemming from the actual personality of the counselor but they are stemming from the childhood emotional response to parents significant others and caregivers so interpretation of transference helps in the re-experience of a variety of feelings that were otherwise completely inaccessible to the client transference feelings operate at an unconscious level and uh, therefore the client is not aware of the responses uh, that he is making to the counselor and does not does not realize that these responses could also be inappropriate exploration of affect uh this is another technique that we use uh, emotional insight requires exploration of feelings emotions uh, emotional processing of memories and other psychological material that is brought forth in therapy so many a times you would find that the client is using a lot of intellectual terms and is actually understanding at a mental level but is not emotionally experiencing uh what he or she is understanding so these experiences or memories can be in the form of the client's childhood or previous adult years and it can be done in a variety of ways for example you know the client might be asked to bring the childhood album and then you discuss the uh, photographs and the albums and take the client back to their childhood and discuss the emotional reactions or experiences that they have had you could ask the client to write a letter to their parent as a child who was hurt or who was abandoned or who was ignored by them and then when the client is writing that letter you can ask the client to write about the feelings uh, of this particular uh, child that was ignored by the parent so these are different ways in which uh, you know we can uh, do insight therapy that can facilitate insight in the client now if you look at the uh, effectiveness of uh, insight therapy uh the effectiveness of insight therapy depends upon the client therapist relationship it's a very important aspect of psychodynamic therapies so therefore building rapport building trust and openness is very essential for the client to open up about difficult issues the therapist plays an important role in this they identify behavioral patterns from the client's past that could be affecting their behavior and relationships at the present time so therefore the counselor has to be very alert and all the time listening to what the client is saying because you have to make connections or or you have to decipher patterns insight therapy has found some empirical support also indicating a positive link between increased insight during treatment and outcome few studies also suggest that increase in self understanding precedes symptom change 
and regard insight as a curative factor in therapy. So that means if I get insight about my problem and the genesis of my problem, I'll be able to help myself reduce my maladaptive behavior. It is effective for anxiety, depression, eating disorders, relational, family or academic problems. However, there is a need for more precise measurements as well as more research to specify the conditions in which insight would facilitate the change. Some of the criticism are also based on the fact that insights generated might not actually be real insight, they might be placebo insight, there might be the pressure of the therapeutic encounter that may cause clients to experience insight, they might uh, be deceptive, they might be illusory, they might lack depth and they might actually be uh, misunderstandings and not real uh, explanations for the problems. So, in today's uh, video, we talked about insight therapy, we studied insight therapy, which comes under broadly under the psychodynamic approach to counseling, which has its roots in uh, Freudian psychoanalysis. Insight therapy has specifically been developed from the perspective of psychoanalysis with its focus on exploration of the client's past identification of causes or origins for presenting problems. So this deciphering the patterns of the client's life, connecting them with their past, childhood and helping them see these inner workings are the backbone of insight therapy. I hope the concepts that we have discussed today are clear to you and you have enjoyed inside therapy and learning about inside therapies thank you so much